right, guys. Thanks for tuning in again. We are back with another PN Wild gear review. This was another highly, highly requested. Very, very. Uh, every time, I, I feel like every time we post a picture of tripods, yes, what in any use, yeah. people always say either, "Why are you so dumb?" and are carrying so much weight. A forty-five pound tripod. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, what is that? I gotta have one. Exactly. Yeah, I'm with you. And uh, to touch base on these, let's let's dive in. I will go first. Mine is a older um, little sister to yours, so we'll dive in. Mine is a Manfrotto fluid head. Uh, it's the MVH500AH fluid drag system. Um, it still performs awesome. Um, it's the, like I said, the outdated one. He's got the, the big brother, the newer, the bigger, the badder. Definitely heavier. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's the fluid head that I'm using. And I think uh, I'll let Pat touch on it later so he can dive deeper in. They are an absolute staple when glassing, spotting, and filming to have, yeah. a, to have a fluid head like this. Yeah. Um, you can argue all you want. You're not gonna. You're not gonna change my mind. You get the the cheaper non-fluid heads, or you know something that's not in the realm. You get that jerky twist. You know you you can't stay on it. You can't pan with the animal that's moving. You can't uh, film without the jerky. You know everybody sees that phone scope footage when you're on an animal and then it's boom, boom, boom. Yeah, yeah it, you don't get that with these. And um, so I would really, really recommend a high quality um, head. Down to the tripod, it is a Slick Pro 634 CFL. I do believe this is outdated now. I got this in spring of 16, so I do believe they are they have a better um, product out now, so an, an updated one, a newer one. But uh, super light. I think the tripod alone without the head is only, excuse me, two pounds, something ounces. I'll touch back in and put it down in the comments so you can quote those. Uh, the head, I think, is what adds the weight. I think the whole um, tripod, actually, I'm going to weigh it. I have my scale right here. I'll weigh it right here. Zero it out. Zero it. Are we free? Are we not touching? No, we're touching. We're, we're good. Not touching. What are we at? Four pounds. Five ounces. Five, yep. Four pounds, five ounces. All said and done, tripod, head, everything. Four pounds, five ounces. So yeah, the, the tripod is carbon fiber, so you cut a little bit of weight there. It is, a, like I said, the Slick 634 CFL. Um, I do have a very, very um, important message for people watching that are in that range looking for a new tripod, get the twist locks like Patrick has. These locks uh, are failing miserably. Uh, slick, please reach out, please fix, please fix this. Uh, I am going to um, get a new system this year. Yeah. I'm gonna be going to the twist lock. Well, the big issue you've had is like the, the different sections, because this is a, a three section tripod. Yes, yes. And the sections don't lock twist wise and so you're running into where you're trying to unlock it and it's twisting, on a, and, and it's twisting on you and yeah. the locks themselves as well are, are rusted full with yeah. stuff you know and i think probably slick's original intended use for this tripod was not what we're using it for to be totally fair to I be think fair it was probably yeah. it designed as like a uh, a studio use item and unfortunately that's just not or the just your, we your urban in. photographer. Totally is and, what I'm is what I'm guessing, and that's just not the environment that we operate in. Yeah, um, but I know that there are lots of people in the outdoor and hunting industry mm -hmm. or realm that have used slick tripods, and I've never actually heard anyone bring up that point. Yeah, um, and but it is super annoying. Yeah, yeah, and I think it's very important that you guys know about this prior to going in that the tripod itself. Is, is great, the carbon fiber, every, I haven't had an issue with that. It's the locking mechanism. I would recommend getting the twist locks like Patrick has. Hopefully you won't have the issues that I had. Um, they're just, they're failing miserably. You, you go to unlock it and the whole system spins. So you just can't unlock it. Uh, I've had, they do have the Allen keys, you know, there and we have done everything we can to re-tighten them up. They get to the point where you cannot physically open anymore 
because it's so tight, and then you, you loosen it up just a little bit so you can do it, and then you just get the whole thing to spin. Yeah. So See that? Like, how are you gonna, how are you gonna flip that when it spins? Yeah. So, I, I don't know. I, I, I have to contact And Slick. you've had some issues with the center mast. Yes. Up at the top yep. here, you, you lost a fastener, and then, it, and then it runs into where you can't get it to lock. Yes. You know, when you want to. Yep, yep. So I would definitely, um, <laughs> I don't know. Would you recommend the Manfrotto MVH 500? Yes. The head? Yes. Okay. I've used the head and I, I would personally, if somebody asked me, hey, should I get the MVH 500? I would probably say yes. It's a great head. Yeah. Because I've, I've had good experience with it. And it is a good compromise in weight. Uh, yes, yeah, compared exactly. Compared to mine. Yeah. I know for a fact. Yours but, has bigger, bulkier features, clearly. You can see them side by side. You know, it, it, is, it is bigger. Um, I think the guts, the fluid system might be a very similar design. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure they're both Manfrotto heads. Yes. Uh, but so you would recommend your your fluid head? Yes. You probably wouldn't recommend exactly the slick tripod that you have. No, Again, I would not you recommend would go with at least the twist locks. Yes, I would not recommend you guys go buy this tripod. Uh, it's sad to me to say um, it is very expensive for a tripod. Uh, I paid two hundred and and 35 some odd dollars for the sure. tripod and then i think it's like 160 for the head somewhere in that ballpark um i mean like you see the tripod is you know like it's not supposed to be like that yeah. you can't open it um there could be some major user moron um error there but i think we've done everything we can to try to fix this issue can't get it fixed um so that's a big red x for the tripod and the locking system Take it away, Pat. Sure. So I'm as well using a Manfrotto pan head, uh, fluid head, and this is the MVH 502, uh, which is like we were saying, just the big brother. It's uh, Manfrotto redesigned because it has the same like bridging technology where you can attach multiple items. Yep. They just redesigned that, uh, and it became this. Uh, I know for a fact, right off the bat, the items that are better on this that mm -hmm. we both talked about. Yeah. The locks. 100%. Are are like way way better. The are, only one they kept is the sure the, up and down the elevation lock, yes. which totally works. Yes, um, it's but great. the but the the y axis lock on yours has always been a pain in the butt. You know the yep the, yep the down here, and it's just a fastener in the back, and it came out unknowingly to me. Sure, and I lost it. So yeah, thank God Patrick had one in his toolbox that we could fit back in there, but. Yeah, there's that so was they, a big. They did inc the the lock makes a whole lot more sense. You know this uh, the the side to side lock is now kind of in between, and I know it seems like a weird place for it, but it's actually super ergonomic. Okay. Like when you're behind the tripod, yeah, it's super easy even without taking your eyes off what you're looking at. I think yeah, I think that's important. Is when you're in it, you know where it's at always. You're not like oh, what side it is on. Yeah, and you can reach down, and it's always on the the objective lens side and so you can just come down and reach down and, and lock it down which is when you're you know zoomed in on an animal say you're at 55 60 power yeah it makes a huge difference to be able to reach down without moving off the glass keep it where you want it and just lock everything up to know that you can just relax a little bit yeah uh, and just sit behind the glass at that point rather than having to hold it yeah um, and the resistance I think on both is is super good. I know the resistance is very fine tunable yes. on on mine to yeah. where I can I can get it to where it will hold as though it is locked mm -hmm. um, until you push it and then it it just has this really smooth fluid motion. Gotcha. Uh, and it'll just hold. So I'm a huge proponent. I know that every time we post a picture of me with this tripod, yes. people are like, you guys are crazy. Yeah, what is why, that? Why, why are you taking that? Yeah. Because this is legitimate, you know, filmmakers use this on on documentary for movie, yeah. movie sets. What does your setup weigh? Let's touch that real quick. Uh, it just came in at six pounds and four and a half ounces. So you got two pounds on it. Which is nuts, yeah. So mine was 4.5. Yeah, and the tripod, I believe my tripod is actually lighter than your tripod. Oh, okay. The legs, okay. I don't. I I believe they are. Um, and this is just to touch on the tripod portion real quickly. This is the Surui uh, T twelve oh five X, and it is a uh, uh, a four section leg. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And the bonus of having slightly more sections is it more compact. Yeah. Which is kind of means nothing now that I've put this big head on it. Yeah. But uh, but it is helpful to at least have it go fold down. Say if you were to put it in your pack, you didn't have the crazy head. You are going to take up less room. Yeah, because wise. it is a four-piece leg. Yeah, four, four. vertically wise. Yeah, so yeah. it's much. T fold yours up real quick. Let's just give them a, a height comparison. If so, you're looking at just the tripod yeah. legs, my tripod legs only come to here. Yeah, and Jeff's is longer because because he has a, a three three-piece leg design. Um, but uh, so I mean, I would definitely this, and I know for a fact I've watched. I know that um, I want to say it's Go Hunt. Who has a really great review of this Surui tripod? Okay. Where they're literally throwing it off the roof of their uh, office building. Perfect. And have it couldn't break it. Oh, cool. And yeah. they broke pretty much every other tripod. I will they link sell. that one down below the link to their review, so you can double review up on the Surui. Yeah. Because it definitely wins on the face-off here. Totally. Yeah. The fluid heads. I also give to the newer one. I think that's a 2018 model. Correct. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe. Yep. Uh, like you said, it's the 502 versus the 500. So the big brother definitely wins on motion wise, everything, locking mechanisms, accessories. It wins. It Just is the same. Too. It is the same exact plate, which is nice. Yeah. I yeah. can throw my spotter onto his. He can throw his camera onto mine. Vice yeah. versa. So that's cool. It's the same plate that they use. So nothing changed there. Um, but yeah, I think uh, head to head, his setup wins unless. You're one of those ounce counter guys because that's sure. two pounds. I didn't realize it was that much more. But I know that, uh, so I know for a fact that if you're not, you know, doing production with your phone scope footage, if you're not trying to make a movie, right? Mm -hmm. I think you could get away with a, a, a lighter and smaller uh, pan head. Mm -hmm. If you were one of those guys that's a serious ounce counter. But me personally, I'll describe, you know, this tripod is as important to me as this glass. Yeah, that I, I agree. Take. You got to put it on. You got to put it on a good foundation. It has to be on a good foundation. Mm -hmm. um, there have been lots of scenarios where I've seen we've been out with guys who are using a lesser tripod or head. Yeah, and have lost an animal. Agreed. That we have been able to keep our eyes on because of our system. Because of our system and how dialed it is. Yes, and it's because. I mean, I know these guys have said it before, and I say it all the time, but myself, I'm super huge on spotter use. Yes. It's just one of those things, we sit down on a glassing knob, the first thing I'm going to do is pull out my spotter. And yeah, and we rely on our spotters and our, spot and our phone scope footage that goes on the spotter in our films. So it's a very important piece to our, our what we're doing at PN Wild. So that's why we have these probably more expensive tripods than most. And uh, that's why we recommend really highly on getting a, a really good fluid head in a stable tripod. And this tripod has definitely fit the bill for what we like to do in the backcountry. Yeah, this I think one it has worked good. It just have the I have this the, the the leg problem. Yeah, I think a case could be made though, even for the guy who's not producing films. Okay. I think a case could be made because I know that when I have gone on solo hunts mm -hmm. where I'm not filming, yep. I've still taken this tripod. Absolutely. You throw so binos on that thing? Exactly. You're, it's Rock solid. Exactly. You get the fluid, mo it's, it's in the name. It's a fluid motion, fluid panning head system. Yeah. You're not getting the extreme jerkiness when you're on either bino, spotter, cameras. Yeah. Anything you get that fluid motion, and I do agree with Patrick. It's easier to stay on animals. You're not getting that, oh, and then you're all of a sudden you're way up here, you're way down there. You're like, whoa! Yeah. The fluid head. It yeah. pays. It pays. I promise. It pays. Um, like but I said, Mike, it could help you stay on an animal. It just to just to run down the pricing, and I know that this gets a little bit out of hand because we're talking mm -hmm. about carbon fiber mm -hmm. and you know something that has videography in the yeah. Name, this is an important part to which, people though. Uh, but the Rui tripod is coming in. Just the legs is two hundred and thirty bucks, mm -hmm. and they're so identical. I think that both tripods come in at two thirty. Yeah, they're right at the same price point. Um, and I think, like we've said, at least this particular slick tripod mm -hmm. and this particular Surui, mm -hmm. I would go with this one all day long. Me too. Um, it's proven to be super strong. I am not kind to gear. I'm not like nice to it. I've thrown this thing around, and it's totally you know it looks like this sticker. 
I mean, you got you got a scratch. But on, that's on, yeah, on, exactly. That's on the about powder it. coat up top. Like I can't uh, I can't say anything bad about it. it's it's holding up. It's super strong. Um, and then the head, this head comes in at uh, 250, 260 bucks, something like that, which. Once again, I know it sounds a little crazy. Uh, so you're you're almost after taxes and shipping, you're probably at five hundred bucks. It's probably a five hundred dollars setup. Yeah, and I'm, is, I think I'm I'm slightly less. I think this is probably around that forty fifty four hundred something like that. Yeah. Um, for what we're doing, it totally makes sense. And like I said, uh, I I still am willing to carry it anywhere I go. I think that's know? what we've chalked up. Like I'm willing to carry my camera. You know, yeah, it's seven pounds. It's yeah. crazy. It it seems silly to yeah. anybody else. Uh, who's not in that situation, but it just totally makes sense for me. Um, one thing I will say, if you do decide to get this specific head, uh, I went and chopped the handle down because this handle comes, it's like way longer. Um, and that's and, probably for the videography people. Exactly, sure. And it is. it does make sense to have the handle a lot longer, you know, on a movie set. Mm -hmm. um, for us, it just didn't make sense because the problem was it was always in the way when I was trying to pack it. Yeah. Um, and so it just it just really helped to shorten that handle down. And in, in, in just if you're going to go that route, you can loosen them up and take the handle completely out yes. on the way in if you wanted to. And then... Or you, know, you can leave it behind. Yeah, I've might. actually, we've gone yeah. on trips, I know on our, on our elk hunt, uh, where we weren't using a spotter very often. Yeah. I did have this with me, but I would just leave this uh, at camp because it just didn't make sense to, to need that. And if you're on, again, diving a little bit deeper, they do have mounts on both sides. So if you're a left-handed guy, it can mount on the opposite side. It can mount on either side of the tripod going for both of these. Same. They're mirrored. Yep. So that is cool. You can completely leave it off. You don't have to have the handle. You can put on either side. Would you recommend this head? 100%. Yeah. For, for the right person, mm -hmm. I don't think I'd recommend this for the baby hunter, but yeah. for, for the right guy uh, or gal who is very dedicated to glassing, is trying to do a lot of filming, you know, phone scope footage of animals, uh, I think this totally makes sense and it's crazy strong. I haven't broken it yet, which uh, is saying something. From the horse's mouth, would you recommend your tripod? Have you had any issues with that? The Sarui T1205X. Uh, yeah, I would totally recommend it. Um, Perfect. So that's a two thumbs up on your whole system. Double. I would recommend this head. Not recommend the tripod. Just because, like we said before, the legs, the locking system is not holding up to what we have been putting them through. I'm sure it'd be great in a studio. I'm sure it'd be great for the urban guy or, you know, the Portrait whatever. Portrait photographer. Exactly, yeah. yeah. If you're in that realm, you're looking strictly for, if you found this review for portraits and, you know, you know photography work, you're not gonna be in the backcountry beating the, the crap out of it. I'm sure it'd be great um, for what we do in the backcountry. I would not recommend the slick CF634. That's a wrap, guys. That's a wrap.